Welcome to another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Wally. And today, I am so excited to have on a 27-year-old from London, England. His hockey journey has taken him to the USA, England, and New Zealand, a staple of the Los Angeles Junior Kings program, and a legend with the Spokane Chiefs. Laced up for Team GB in the under-20s and won a gold medal with the men's team. He is the Shed's first Sky City Stampeder of the New Zealand Hockey League, where he ran an absolute muck in two seasons combined for in 26 games played, 33 goals, 58 points on route to the bus, best plus minus at plus 29, most goals, league MVP, finals MVP, and a champion. And he just finished running a muck of the NIHL with the Milton Keynes Lightning with 61 and 45 and six playoff goals. Welcome to the shed, Liam Stewart. <laughs> What's going on, man? Quite the introduction you got there. Holy. Yeah, well, I, was, I was trying. Try my best yeah. every, every time, you know? <laughs> I didn't realize that plus minus stat in the NZIHL. Plus 29, uh, I'll take that. It's yeah. the best of my career. Uh, that plus 29 is, that's doing her. That's, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. that's like Mark Richardson type stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um so i get into how we know each other i guess we don't nice to meet you <laughs> nice to meet you pleasure <laughs> yeah um i guess we were gonna do this last night but you got pulled away for dinner eh yeah yeah the old man wanted to go to dinner so i had to had to obey the orders didn't i well i would think so because you've been playing in the uk all year so what you're in la now yeah back in la uh my well pretty much the whole family's coming over here but my dad's playing in vegas right now so he's kind of by himself other than with me so whenever he wants to go to dinner i just you know I got oh for sure yeah and when it. you're when you're gone all year and then yeah. you're finally yeah. there you if he says let's go for dinner you gotta go he's gotta yeah. be a pretty busy fella eh? <laughs> yeah oh yeah exactly yeah i i totally understand and uh thanks for making the time tonight so what was for dinner last night where'd you go uh we didn't to be fair we didn't actually go anywhere but we stayed in and he uh he has a chef obviously we had some nice pesto. It was some don't even couldn't even tell yet. It was pesto pasta. Uh, yeah. But a nice like goat cheese Greek salad or something like that, and it just Talk had a whole me. bunch of different shit in it. Like to way me. too healthy for me. Well, but, goat cheese is good though. That yeah, shit. I, yeah. Oh, that can be real good. You know. But uh, but it's unreal. So it's you know I don't usually get cooked for like that. So when you have a chef around, it's pretty cool. But I'm sure he's used to it by now. I understand tonight, you know, not to yeah. my own horn here, but I, I just finished, I had a slow cooker beef roast throughout the day, you know, That's and amazing. then, uh, I did, uh, what? no, I, I pulled shredded it apart. It? Yeah. I shredded it. Yeah, yeah. I had shredded beef and then I made potato gnocchi and I put oh. a, uh, pepper ramps or it's, that's the German word. God, what's it called? Four peppercorn sauce on it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The brown one, you know, on yeah. top of the yeah, gnocchi yeah. and the beef. I was, oh, we had a muck in the kitchen today. That's unreal. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Anyways, so I was curious what you guys were having because I loved the meal I had tonight. <laughs> um, so I guess how I had known your name was when I was in the UK leagues, um, yeah. is how I knew your name. You were with the Spokane Chiefs in 2014 15. And then the next year you were a Brit in the East coast. So obviously the boys were letting me know about you, yeah. but you got to stop playing with that beer cap. I hear it. Was it loud? Sorry. Oh yeah. Yeah. Back off, man. Props um, to no one it's a beer cap though. Yeah. So anyways, that's how I knew your name. That's how I reached out to you. And I guess I did just reach out to you on social media, like a creepy yeah. stalker. So thanks for no, coming not on. Not at all. Not at all. <laughs> uh, I guess it's not weird at all. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Uh, but then when <laughs> I did start following you, and I see it now. Fantastic mullet, sir. <laughs> Fuck, man. I got we. I wasn't planning on doing it. I'm doing it. Um, but I shook my assistant hand, my assistant coach's hand. I was like, if we make it to the Coventry Finals, I'll do it. And uh, surely enough, we made it after. I think it was like the third round of uh, games, and one of the boys got a barber down to the locker room, and we all yeah. kind of did something to our hair, but. Yeah, so it wasn't know. just you. It was a bunch of no, fellas. Bobby. Are, are you sure you know Bobby Chamberlain? He did like the Mr. T mohawk kind of down the middle. Is that right? Um, yeah. And then a couple of the young guys just got like a lightning bolt in their hair. 
but I had to go full tilt with the with the mullet. I would think so. It looks fantastic, and you're yeah, yeah you're still uh, rocking it, eh? Oh, it's my new haircut. I think I gotta it, go with it. Yeah, it, it, it looks good. I tell you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, no, I, that when I saw that, I'm like, ah, he looks like a guy that has fun playing hockey. Cause that's what I, <laughs> that's what I'm about. I, uh, I always had fun playing the game, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. I have a lot of fun. Um, so then I did see though, it, uh, you guys made it. To, so I don't know how that league works. Was it like the same as the EIHL for playoffs? Cause you played 10 playoff games. Yeah. So it's, uh, I mean, a bit different coming from like, uh, like the coast and then obviously Spokane, you play seven game series. Um, I think it was just kind of, so it becomes like a new, like mini league of the top teams that made it. Okay. And then the top four that finish, like with the most points go to the final four weekend. It's just a one game off. Like you lose your out kind of thing. So it's just, I, yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. We lost in the finals and, uh, we just, just wasn't our day, but Sheffield played well. So got to give it to him, I guess. So you lost to Sheffield. So that playoff weekends in. Did you say Coventry? Yeah, so the playoff final is in Coventry for us. So they bring all the fans to Coventry? Yeah, so like all the like MK fans are probably I'd say like the best in the in the NIHL. Um I mean even the Elite League this year they're better than some Elite League fans, but they block out like four or five blocks and then you got the rest of the other teams that make it as well, which is pretty cool to see like kind of everyone merging together i guess you could say so it is the same as the eihl then yeah like it's they, kind have... of, they, they go to nottingham nottingham don't they but um yeah it's all the same really but you'd rather go to nottingham <laughs> yeah oh yeah <laughs> you know it just says for like bars and like restaurants probably right i've never actually been out in coventry i've only heard <laughs> i mean coventry's not too bad when i played there my first year right it was it was, it was fun but uh yeah you know, yeah, you don't want to say bad things about a place you played in. I understand. Yeah, don't say yeah. anything. Um, <laughs> I'm sure it's a great way. So what was the score of that final game? I didn't see. Oh, uh, it was 4-1. It was a blowout. Sorry yeah. sorry to bring it up. Was that Hewitt guy on the other team then? Hewitt was on the other team, and he's yeah. just like that. He's just a solid player all around, isn't he? He is, yeah. He's just a little bulldog goals. out there. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. He's a and playoff had, player, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. And then they had a few other guys that, you know, chipped in as well, and we just couldn't. We got one back and then they just kind of let loose and that was the end of it. Yeah. That sucks, man. Losing yeah. sucks. Yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, so my next question then I always ask this is where and what are you doing now? I'm currently in Los Angeles. Um, kind of just winding down, I guess you'd say I'm, I mean, I'm training at the moment and I'm playing in like a little four V four league. Um, but just kind of chilling, enjoying being with the family. Uh, it's the girlfriend's first time in the States or second time, but this is a longer stay now. Um, so just kind of exploring, really, uh, hanging out with the family, going to Vegas with my dad, um, which is always fun. Uh, and, yeah, nothing crazy. It's home for me, so I just kind of go with the flow and just kind of chill out. Yeah, no, no kidding. So I'm just curious. So you guys set up shop there, but then you, you head to Vegas every once in a while to do the shows. Yeah, yeah. So he, so it's with Caesar's Palace, and they fly him uh, in and out pretty much. I got you, but he gets to live at home when he's doing all that. Yeah, that's cool. yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, exactly. yeah. That's cool. Um, yeah. so you're already training and skating already. Yuck! Didn't you just uh, finish? Yeah, I mean, I'm kind of like, uh, I just love, I love working out. I know it sounds weird right <laughs> after the season, but like, as of the plan, like it's just kind of a fun like older guys we have beers and pizza after it's kind of like the ihl um but you just kind of just kind of hang out catch up with everyone kind of like yeah so you have a bunch of buddies in the area that you know that from i guess yeah 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 okay um yeah i had realized today because i had i haven't worked out in quite some time that i i i so when i started this like I lost a bunch of weight because it was like the depression way to being out of the game and like not having yeah, fun. Yeah. And then like I got like way skinnier. And now I guess drinking a lot in your shed does <laughs> make you fat when you don't exercise. So yeah, oh yeah. I, th get the best of you. I think I'm gonna have to get on the old bicycle again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Stationary bike. Yeah, you they're gonna to gonna that. have to do something. You know, the gooch might hurt for a bit when I get back <laughs> on that thing. Oh, those things fucking suck when it comes to that. 
doesn't it? Like, oh, well, if you haven't hurt. done it for a while, like if you don't, I don't know. I didn't do it that often during seasons back in my no. day. I'm a lot older, right? So then once you got back into it, whew, she's tender yeah, for a while. It was tough, eh? Yeah. So, okay. The, uh, my other question then is uh, you were posting stuff about the Celtic Football Club. What's that? So that is a – obviously you know about like the Premier League. Yeah. Um, so it's basically the Scottish Premier League, which is what me and my dad's side of the family uh, – grew up supporting we grew up supporting celtic football club um and if you didn't you were kicked out of the house uh but he's he's fallen he's been in love with them since you know he's he's a kid and he's passed it on down to us and uh they just won the league which they is pretty won, big they won the premier league no not the they won the scottish premier league not the right. premier league yeah i but, got you uh, I used to be a, I used to be a back when, you know, I, I didn't have a real job and I had time to do stuff. Yeah. 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 I, I did play, I did that. play some FIFA back in when I yeah, was a oh, yeah. player. Yeah, I did. Yeah. Oh yeah. So I've, I, I've heard great. of them. Yeah. I've heard of them, yeah. but um, so they won their league. They just did so they won the league, which means they'll go into, I'm sure you know of like the champions league. Yeah. Uh, with next year, which is gonna be pretty cool. Uh, hopefully go to a game or two. Not sure. That'd be but, cool. Um, yeah, my dad was pretty excited. He celebrated in Vegas. He had them all up on the big screen while he was performing and uh, had plenty of drinks after as well, which was <laughs> pretty fun. Yeah, no, it's it's good to be passionate about teams. It makes it way more fun, right, when you actually oh, care he, who he, wins he, and loses. <laughs> real passionate about it too. Yeah. Like if they lose, we'll be in a bad mood the rest of the day. Uh, it's like around here, man. The Leafs just lost for around here. Oh. And everybody's just like, it's never going to change. And <laughs> that's like, well. Oh. Yeah, and I'm telling you, if they made it past that, it's just that first round. I think they'd be fine, but it's a mental block. It's a real oh one. My God. <laughs> it's a mental block. <laughs> I'm not so. I'm not sure you might not like this, but I think now that Edmonton made it past the first round, I think they're going to do pretty well. You think so? I think they're going to be all right. Um, they're fucking such a good team, man. And if Smith plays like he does. That, I don't watch enough to know, dude. I, I have a hard time yeah. watching. I like, I'm getting a little more into it now, but I, I yeah. would rather like talk to dudes in my shed yeah, than yeah, watch yeah. hockey. Fair so enough. um, I'd rather talk about it than watch it. I don't know. I'd <laughs> rather watch live hockey though, but this playoff yeah. hockey is better, but I just, you see some of those plays in the leaf series that like, I always talk about how the games changed. There's like a couple of play, not Matthews, not Marner. They're gamers. Yeah. But there's a player or two on that team that like they pull up and they're soft. And it's like, you don't win championships with guys like that. No, You well, don't, I, you like can't me, like Nylander. Right. Wow. Well, yeah. yeah. You know, <laughs> like, well, you just, but like to think <laughs> of him winning four best of seven series with that soft ass play, you don't, yeah, you don't, <laughs> you win like with Ryan O'Reilly's and Jamie Benz and like the, yeah, the exactly. boys that'll give her, you know? Jamie Ben's fucking unbelievable. One of my favorite players it's to fun. watch for yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, he would have abused me for sure if I played against him. I could just picture it. I would have hated him if I actually played against him. <laughs> um, okay, so what else do I got? I had that. And then um, you sign anywhere for next year? As of right now, no. Just kind of keeping the options open i guess you could say but you never do know right with these things because sometimes yeah. teams sign guys and they're like you can't tell anybody till we announce yeah, it yeah, yeah. and then it's no. like well we'll wait till after hours you can let me know then but it's yeah. cool whatever <laughs> no i can confirm i haven't signed anywhere as of yet so okay but you were in melted Keynes, and it was a good year yeah it was a pretty good year it was a good group of guys you know we had some good times uh you know, a bunch of it's. It was a younger group. It's getting into that. I'm kind of that older guy now, which is surprising. At only 27, but happens fast, uh, doesn't it? Oh fucking hell, does it ever? Um, but yeah, it kind of had a group of sick, young, talented players. Um, and we're all clicking. I think we went on like a nine or ten game win streak, and we're we were top of the league for a bit. Um. And then we just kind of shit the bed, I guess you could say. We fucking lost. Like, we couldn't get – we weren't consistent. And we were like, win one, lose three, and then win two, lose four or five. And it's just like, oh, shit. So we lost the league. But, you know, 
I'd say, like, say I was to go back there next year, if we had that same team, uh, I think we could. You could do it. You no, know, we could win it all. Plus all the other, you know how many trophies they have in England. They fucking every. So trophy in this, in that league, there's the league, the playoffs. Yeah. Is there's something else? There's like there's two cups as well. So it's like, uh, it's the autumn cup and then like the spring cup or something like that. Which is it's, it's like, great that they let. It's the same in the HL where there's the three winners and every sometimes there's three winners. You all get to go yeah. home at the end of the season. Like you feel like a champion. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I know. One piece of silverware. You're good to go. Yeah. <laughs> Look at this. I started a whole podcast off of one challenge cup. <laughs> <laughs> Chall- hey, challenge cup is sick though. It, it was a great time. Yeah. In Sheffield against Sheffield. Good times. Yeah um okay so then uh plan for the off season so where what is this home base then for you uh yeah i think so it's gonna be we're moving down me and my girlfriend moving down to like manhattan beach area which is where all my buddies are kind of based it's gonna be heaps of volleyball beach volleyball beers uh Got to keep up the out. physique for beach volleyball. Eh? I've never, yeah, exactly. I always enjoyed the sport. I never had the physique for it though. You know, no, it's, uh, my buddies, we don't have the physique either, but you know, you got the um, hair for it, got the hair for it and the mustache, but that's about it. You'd look fantastic. No, in short so, shorts though. Right now you'd look fantastic. Oh, we're thinking about getting, thinking about getting a team speedo. Out yeah. And just kind of playing in speedos. I know. Uh, yeah, uh, no, I agree. Do it. That would be funny. No, but yeah, just lots of by the beach, sunny every day here. So you can't, you can't complain. Um, so every day is a good day for training. living. You'd say every day is a good day. Yeah. But yeah, that, it'll be, a, awesome. it'll be a good summer. I think that sounds great. I'd have a hard time working out. Well, I guess beach volleyball is a workout, but um, oh God, is ever yeah, you got to run Tough around in sand, way. right? <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we played a lot of that at Western Michigan University. There was a lot of beach volleyball in, uh, on campus, you could say. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. Okay, better get into this then. So where did you grow up, though? Because it says you were born in London when the research team looked. Yeah, I was born in London in Westminster. Uh, and then kind of I grew up there for about two, two, three years, and then moved over here to Los Angeles and then that's kind of been like so this has been home base since you were two or three. Yeah, as you said in the introduction, LA Junior Kings pretty much my whole like uh Bantam midget like Mike career. Uh I've had one year with the Selects, which was cool. Um what's yeah, the pretty much sele- what's the here. Selects? Not, what's that? Really. What's it's Selects? Like, uh, so you have like the Ducks, well back in I was saying back in my day. It was like the Kings, the Ducks, San Jose, uh, California Heat, and then you had like the Selects, who were like the big dogs, and everyone everyone wanted to take down like the Selects, um, and everyone tried out for them as well. Um, so and one year I made it, though, which was pretty fun. Well, and yeah, then, for uh, sure. Yeah, but we didn't we didn't win anything that year because we had a bunch of degenerates on our team, but you know, a mm. bunch of beauties. Yeah, but uh, yeah pretty much just LA junior Kings throughout growing up. And so that's what, that's one thing I always talk about on this though, is the change in U S hockey. Like, I don't think they've had enough world, like real world championships with like the actual best players from Canada, the U S to see like with the world, there hasn't been enough of that shit going on. They need to figure that out because the way like scholarships used to be in Ontario and Canada, we used to get lots of scholarships to the U S and now there's yeah. there's like factories of hockey players in St. Louis and that in LA and like you yeah. guys would have been those ones starting at that like were the first ones coming up that were like legit yeah. hockey players, eh? Yeah, I think I don't want to say I was because it's like, but there was a, probably a year or two before me that were like from California, like like the Bo Bennett's. Not sure if you heard of Bo Bennett. Yeah, um, he had won a Stanley Cup, I guess you'd say, which is pretty cool. Uh, and a bunch of other players that were like solid players. And it was kind of like a select few that were decent rolling through that oh, might make the NHL, might make the coast or the A. But now you got guys just coming out of the woodworks. You got I, guys 
crazy Played Michigan fucking everywhere and they're like tearing it up as well so so what's the facilities like was it when like the ducks and the I guess the Kings were there forever, eh? When did yeah. they start? Like the seventies? Well, I think so. Maybe a little before. Yeah, probably. So the they've time. always been there, eh? But it wasn't until Gretzky yeah. got there where they got big time, right? Gret- yeah, Gretzky had a lot, a lot, a lot to do with it. Um, but yeah, it's kind of just been. I mean, the facilities are great here, especially where the Kings train out of. The right. Mighty Ducks like the- movies would have been pretty big deal too around there. Yeah, right? that's true too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey? Anaheim Mighty Ducks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, because that team cool. started right after the movie, didn't it? I think. I, th- I think they were just called the Ducks, and then when that movie. Are came you up, sure? I think so. Research team thinks no, we don't know, but I'm thinking that that movie came out and Disney was in california and then yeah, yeah. Them, california. that started a team called the Could mighty been, ducks you know. but I don't, know, I don't know enough about it but it's I'm weird sure though because the small world is like when you talk to the british guys on here and you're like how'd you get into hockey there's been many of them say the mighty ducks movies were a big yeah. deal you know yeah oh yeah no i mean those were fucking iconic movies well, that third one, that movie. third one yeah. could have been better. I mean, oh, I haven't even seen the third one. I'm I'm only yeah. like a one and two guy. I don't like. Yeah, that. no, there you go. You grew up right then. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to see the remake and whatever happened. I just want to see the triple D, and that's it. Yeah, yeah, that coach is a dick at the start of that movie. <laughs> <laughs> Hawks. Yeah. Anyways, back game. Sorry, sidetracked, eh? Uh, but uh, do you think it's uh, the facilities or do you think it's the coaching that you guys get in LA? Like, is it a bunch of retired NHLers or that are coaching their kids now that stayed uh, there? I mean, I wouldn't say it's not like a bunch of retired NHLers, but I think you have so many resources around you nowadays. Mm. Like when I was growing up, it wasn't like that at all. Like you had guys that would come and train here in the summer. And you could train with some pro guys, which is pretty cool. But like nowadays, it's just you have like shooting facilities, you have off ice, you have on ice every day, anytime you want. And you have guys that have played pro, ex NHL, like European players. Um, so those kids coming up now have like, if you don't make it, you're shit because you have every resource you need to make it. But, um, but there's a lot of kids that have those there's a resources. lot of kids. There's a lot of kids. So the select few, um, and I'd say the junior Kings program now is probably the biggest one in California. Um, okay. Producing a lot of players produce that Yamamoto that's in Edmonton right now as well, which is pretty cool. Um, he came out of there. Yeah. He came out. Of, he was born in Spokane, but uh, played junior Kings. And then I played with him in Spokane for, I think it was two years, him and his brother. Oh, that's sweet. cool. Um, so, yeah, it's, I just, I think, uh, like, because I'm Canadian, you know, you want Canada to win. Other than, like, world championships, I'm cheering for all the shed guys that have came on. There's yeah. a lot a lot of them in the world championships. Yeah. I think it's really cool when my buddies score in the world championships, you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I think if they had those tournaments again, the Americans would have quite the squads. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so then uh, I bet you the cost of hockey wasn't cheap, though. And if you're saying they have all those facilities, they probably aren't cheap to go to. Like, the kids that are playing down there, like, mommy and daddy aren't driving in in, like, uh, you know, a shitty car. (laughs) No, I mean. You got to stop playing with your hands, though. Stop playing with your tally whacker down there. (laughs) Sorry. No, I mean, it's, like, it's obviously expensive. I mean, I'd say anywhere it's pretty expensive nowadays. but yeah, I think I think the the clubs kind of do a good job of like like with all travel costs and all this and all that. They kind of do a good job of you know some family like everything. Some families can afford it, some families can't. So they might help out the less fortunate families that can't afford like the plane ticket to go somewhere or that kind of thing, um, which is pretty cool. Like you know, because if you have a kid that's a sick player but can't afford it, you know, obviously you have a good club to back you and he bring him on the trip and he gets 19 goals in four games which is what you want but yeah, uh yeah. but no it's it's not i wouldn't say it's it's not flashy like 
yes, of course, everyone thinks of LA as like this. Everyone's driving in Lamborghinis, and but like when you really see and you really get to know, like I guess you could say us and the group that's grown up around it. It's just a bunch of beach bums that like to play hockey and sit by the beach all day and golf and eat Chipotle, which is pretty oh. much all we do. Yeah, that um, sounds like a life, buddy. I yeah, love I mean, Chipotle. That's the thing. Oh. It's, it's, it's just hockey, beach, and – What do you, you get know, at yeah. Chipotle? Oh, I'm a br- – ah, it depends on the day, but I always go – it's chicken or steak, but sometimes I like having the bowl – because if you mix it around and you get it all like, well, so what? Yeah. yeah cause ready. I'm a fat, cause I'm, well, that's what, that's what I was going to say. I'm a fat boy yeah. that like, I get this, I would get the steak. I would get almost every salsa too. sour cream yeah, cheese. Yeah. I'd really do her up, but then I I'd get some extra chips so I can, yeah. I, I I'm not getting a fork out to eat my bowl. I'm scooping no. everything. Yeah. You scoop everything. And then whatever's left, you just kind of waffle. You run a muck, right? Yeah. You yeah, just oh, yeah. get after it. Okay. Yeah, well, definitely. we're on the same page there then. Well, it sounds like you're, it's a good spot. So um, I played, uh, yeah, I guess this is not out there, but uh, there's a bunch of roller hockey out there. Wouldn't there be? Oh yeah. There's, I mean, it's not so much when I was growing up, but nowadays it's just, it's everywhere. Like we have a little, we play every Saturday down in Santa Monica. We go shirts for skins, uh, two goalies, and we just kind of, hang out and have a few beers and play roller hockey by the beach. It's pretty fun. It's a good that, time. So that sounds fun. I don't think yeah, my oh knee yeah. is up for it, but it's not up for pickleball either. But that's what I do with the <laughs> neighborhood fellas around here, <laughs> but there's injuries every summer. You know, we're getting to the age bracket. Now we can't even hang in pickleball. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You get the old pulled hammy. Or oh something yeah. Like a lot of, a lot of calves been going on the old fellas over there. Yeah. <laughs> shin splints achilles are being done yeah uh, it's tough when you see them because all of a sudden they just pull up right but i'm doing the same with my knee it sucks i'm hobbling around yeah. but yeah roller hockey is a blast and i played a ton of it narch champion no big deal but um anyways <laughs> okay what else do i got then so from there i had another guy written down that you guys ran a muck together uh zach something put chiro Oh, guys, Pachuro? Yeah, because he's still yeah, playing he, too. The research team found that both of yeah. you are still playing off one under 16 team. Yeah, he uh he's playing in the coast. I'm pretty sure he's won. What's the co what's the coast championship called? Kelly Cup. Kelly, Kelly Cup. Calder's the AHL. Calder's the A, right? Yeah. I think he's won a Calder Cup, so he's doing better than me. Um, and he's he's a he's one of those guys, he just kind of you wouldn't think he's sick. But he just does all the right things. He fights, he dangles, he scores, he's a good shot. And I'm pretty sure he's like six four, six five, maybe. So he's a good, he's a good player. And he's a forward. So he's like a power forward, I guess you could say. But most people want guys like that. Yeah, like. especially in the coast. That's exactly what you want. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, he's still kicking around. So he's doing well, definitely. But you must have been doing well there because you got drafted to the USHL to the Lincoln Stars, but then you end up with the Spokane Chiefs. So how do you decide where to go? Uh, I don't know. Spokane didn't draft you, did they? No, I was undrafted in the Western League. Um, But how would you – I guess it would be the Western League because you're in California. You wouldn't be able to go to the OHL, right, or the Quebec League. Oh, like if I was if I was drafted, I could have. But I, I don't of, know how that works. So would you well, like an import or what? No, no, because I have a U.S. passport, so right. it's one of those things like I can play in the states or whatever like that. Um, but yeah, I was. I got an invite from a few Western League teams, and everyone went to Portland at the time because they were a powerhouse with how much they were kind of producing. Um, and then I didn't want to go where everyone was going. So I went to Spokane. Um, and at the time, the likes of like Tyler Johnson, uh, Jared Cowan, um, Darren Kramer, and all these other guys that you probably wouldn't know about, but they were unbelievable guys um, were there. And I went to camp for four years since I was, no, three years. 14 to 17 and then I made the year made the team as a 17 year old and then played there the rest of my career so it was a so you went to the camps 
the whole time, just like you were almost like a draft pick. Yeah, pretty much. And they invited me back every year. It was, I was put on like a protected list. It was like a 50 player protected list. So they could hold on to me each year. And then I was going to make it as a 16 year old, but I ruptured my uh, hamstring, like completely tore off. And I was like, I was devastated, but anyways, skip forward 17 year old. I made it. And uh, so then do you play anywhere at that age or you like, do you went back home and still played even after you pulled your hamstring? Like, I went I guess- back home, did the whole rehab kind of thing. And, uh, and then went back, played with the, I think it was the selects was my last year. Selects or junior Kings. And then came back to camp fully in shape and the rest is history. Yeah. So you were there. Um, what was it? Four years, four years. Yeah. Your first year you did well though. You were ready to rock 26 points as a rookie and your team played 13 playoff games. So you guys were pretty good. Yeah, it was, uh, we had a good team. It was a bunch of like kind of grinders, I guess you would say. It wasn't like a skilled, skilled team, like definitely had skilled players, but it's weird uh, how every team is different eh? and has a different identity based on like, yeah. just how they, how what the players they got and what they bring. Eh? Yeah. Oh yeah. Cause like Portland at the time, they were just skilled out their ass. Like they just ran circles around guys, but they were tough as well. Don't get me wrong. Um, but yeah, our guys were just grindy third line, but could definitely score. Like guys were scoring 30 odd goals a year. I think one of our players, Mitch Holmberg had, I think he had 64 in one year, which was fucking insane. Goal? Goals? goals, goals, 64 goals. What was his like name? That. Mitch Holmberg. I got to let me check that stat for you. I'm curious where he went from there. Cause they, you know, no, there's he a- didn't want to, I think he went to the coast and then, uh, and then to uh, Europe for a little bit. And then that 64 was it. goals. Jeepers. 64 that's a goals. lot. Um, well, okay. Here's my question then. So you move there. Oh, what, 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 what do you have? 62 and 56 or 56 assists. So 118 and 72. Really? Yeah. Played in the coast for five years. And then how big is he? 5'10", 175. So he wasn't big. Right. And that, that, yeah, I don't know. That's yeah. That's a lot of goals. A lot of goals. (laughs) Um, so when you move there from LA, that do you move in with billets or you got your own place? Yeah. No, definitely, definitely with billets. I actually lived with Holmberg my first year, and we had a we had a pretty good billet. She was a she was a high school principal, so she was gone most of the day. So we just kind of chilled at home, played video games, ate pizza. <laughs> um, it was great first year for me and junior because I had no idea what it was like living away from home. And I was like, oh, is this what you get to do every day then? Um, so you didn't have yeah, to go was, to school? No, didn't go to school because I graduated uh, a year early because I knew I was going up to spoke. So I was like, let's crank out some work, did some extra work like at home and then finished a year early. So I didn't have to do the whole school thing. So it was just full time hockey. Wow. Um, at 17, that's living. Yeah. And, um, I mean, everyone else there, I think there were like four or five school guys on the team, but everyone else was just kind of, I mean, you're not making, you're not, oh no, you're getting like gas money here and there, but that's it. So you're not making much. So you're living like McDonald's pizza hut. You're getting the buffet deals, $13, all you can eat. All that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, I I remember those days. (laughs) Yeah. So, you know, it's, and I loved it. I loved every, every year I was there. Um, it was tough. It was tough work. Cause our coach was Don Knockbar and uh, he played for the flyers back in the day. He was just a tough guy. And uh, if we did something wrong, he would skate the shit out of us. He's old uh, school, old school. He had the thing called a sweet 16 and it's like down back, down back 16 times. But in between each rep, you had to do like 10 push ups, 10 sit ups. And like 10 burpees. And I was just like, Jesus, man, what is this guy made of? Um, but yeah, the bag skates brought us all closer together. And then we'd go out and have a few beers. Not that anyone knew about, but. I've been on those teams where yeah. the, the the bag skating and oh. sometimes the old schoolness or the coach. Yeah. It was almost, I've been on teams where it's almost like the coach wanted everybody to hate him so that yeah. they would come together. 
it's all it's like the old school way of coaching you don't get it anymore but like it's the old school way like you bring the boys together it's just it's hard nose kind of like if you're not performing you don't play if you play well you're playing which now it's kind of like i miss that but now it's the, it's the same guys go out. I, when you watch the games, it's the same guys that go out for every power play, whether they yeah. did good or bad, it's the same guys. Yeah. They don't switch anybody. <laughs> no. Even if the guy is playing like dog shit. Yeah. <laughs> or there's yeah. some guy running a muck on the second or third line. They are power play stay the same. Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I, I don't know. Like, is there not that in hockey? Should there not be that like if reward for playing well, you get more time, but. I think so. I've that's how I grew up playing. Me too. And especially in Spokane, it was like if you play well, you get to play on the power play. And then I played well for three years and finally got my power play chance at the at the uh, twenty year old year. <laughs> well, I played good for three years. Play all right for three years and finally got my chance. Oh, so then um, I did see your last year. You had a big year. Um, you were the a captain, fifty three points. But what I don't know anything about Spokane. Um, right. where is I don't know anything. Well, Washington, big that Washington State, so like close to Vancouver, uh, like Idaho, like yeah, Idaho's so nice. Like, oh, okay, I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Pacific it, Northwest is what they would call it. There'd be some mountains around. Yeah, oh yeah, plenty of mountains around. Just yeah, it was a good place. It was a fun place. I'm glad I went there, but. uh wasn't wasn't much to do and then and then when you're just playing hockey and not doing the school or anything you could get bored right yeah oh yeah that's what that's when video games came in huge you just play with the boys all day on call of duty and just kind of have some fun there right yeah that's where the game went i (laughs) saw it happening it was all video games because you weren't allowed to go and drink anymore (laughs) no oh no no yeah games changed what a joke Okay. Um, but what that year, I think your last year, you yeah. make team GB. So um, how does that happen? Cause you haven't played then in the UK for a long time. Uh, it was kind of just like, I was, I was meant to play GB a couple of years before that. Well, maybe a year or two before that, I got the message from the coach at the time. He's like, do you want to come out, et cetera, et cetera. Like whatever. And I, we were going in the playoffs at the time. So I was like, no, like I want to stay here with Spokane. And, uh, you know, I like Spokane was like the Western league was everything to me. So I wasn't going to leave. Was I? So my last year he called me again. He's like, do you want to come chance to play? I was like, yeah, you know what? Might as well. And then, uh, went and played under twenties for GB, which I don't think we did that well. Really? I think we might've won two or three games. Maybe two, but anyway, yeah. One played there, and then that kind of opened some doors in the UK league, and then yeah. yes, okay. So you didn't like grow up playing minor hockey or anything in the UK, like no, 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 no. yeah. That you were you were gone team. at two or three, so you hadn't been back, and okay, because I was trying to figure out how that happened, but uh, that's where you would have met uh, Sam Duggan. Yeah, I met Dougie. I played with him under 20s, and then I played with him again uh, on the men's team when we were in Belfast. It was like Division 1B or something. I was going to get uh, into that, but you, you know what's weird about Dougie is um, he? I never played with him. I didn't know him until I started the shed, but I did go over to Cardiff for like a night, and I, yeah. did, a, I did a pregame speech naked. and oh, du- yeah, That's unreal. But so Dougie – really enjoys watching the video of me naked he says he like watches it like over it does surprise me he, he is the funniest kid man like i roomed with him for those uh men's team gb and he's just like he will he'll like that makes sense actually because he'll find a funny video and he'll just watch it for ages and i, I don't, don't know, know i don't know what's funny about it i think it's serious i was trying to yeah, you but know? you're fucked cheese. That's what's fucking hilarious. <laughs> it was... If someone's naked, it's fucking funny. Right. That's what I always went with for my previous. The thing speakers. is, if you say that to like your average person, they'd be like, that's not, that's so weird. He's naked. But like to hockey guys, it's like, yeah, it's completely Doesn't... normal. I know. And sometimes like it, it 
I guess when people listen to this and they find out like the way I used to behave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, some questionable choices. Right. But then it's like, well, if, if you get the same 20 guys back in that locker room, you don't think I'll get naked in front of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. Don't matter what age we are. <laughs> yeah. No but Dougie, Stop watching it, man. Sicko. <laughs> he's a funny kid, man. And he's doing well, too. He's doing real well. Oh, yeah. He is. He's no. So he, me and him, we started a really cool thing this year. He came on to be a nice guy with three guys from my under 11 team. Yeah. And uh, we got the Cardiff Devils fans to throw Buenos for the boys. And they threw Buenos That's all over the ice. Well. Yeah, I think so, I did see that a couple of times. Oh, it was cool. So, anyways, yeah, thanks, Dougie, for doing that. My kid was talking about uh changes number to number 16 next year, but then the that's next time number. I had guys come on the pod, you know, Dougie had a date or something, so he couldn't come on. <laughs> so my kid's a little upset about the yeah, whole thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so okay, under 20, you didn't do that good. So, but then we'll get into making the men's team. I'm not there yet. Okay, yeah, not there yet. After your uh, junior career, though, you did go straight to pro, like right out of the right at the end of the season, eh? Yeah, went straight to the old Quad City Mallards. Um, so they just call you up right after junior and say, "Well, you want to come for the playoffs?" Yeah, come for the playoffs and uh, kind of see what happens. Um, I think I scored a goal. I did score a goal because I wasn't. I don't think I was even meant to be on the ice, but I scored, so I was happy. Um, but yeah, I went up there for, for playoffs, which was pretty fun. And, uh, do you know that you're, in. you know what I just, like, I would, you sound totally American, but then all of a sudden I hear like a, like a, it's like in the back of your palate when you're eating, yeah. like the, can, a, a, just a, a hint of, you uh, think all the Canadians that I played with in fucking, uh, I don't Spain. even know if it's Canadian. I think you got it's some British, Canadian, British, yeah. American. I got There's, new kiwi in me. I got everything, pal. There, there was definitely some. Uh, yeah. There was some some tones in the back. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of twang, eh? All right, oh. sorry, sorry. Go no, no, on. you're all good. <laughs> oh yeah, I went to Quad City, which was quite an interesting place. It's like two hours outside Chicago. Um, yeah, I don't even know what to say about it, really. Um. Isn't it weird though? Like when you get to, I guess, North American pro that like your season ended in junior. So then you just show up to like the shitty little apartments they give you, you oh. go to the, you go to the shitty rink, but then like when you showed up, you took some dude's apartment and like, sometimes yeah. there'd be guys showing up and there'd be like families leaving and yeah. like kids from college are showing up like, Hey, I'm ready to play pro. And yeah. you're like ruining some guy's life. <laughs> Full you know? on wife, kids, everything, and then yeah. they're just leaving. And they're like, just oh, axing okay. them like, "Sorry, your yeah. career's over." <laughs> Some spring chickens coming in here, like all excited, not knowing what to do. It's crazy, eh? But I mean, it, it is what it is. It's what it is isn't with it? junior and college seasons and man, it's a bloodbath out there. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. I mean, the now I'm not sure where, like what questions you have, but when I went, I got went to Missouri the next year. And, I, uh, I don't even know what questions I have, man. I just go with it. I just perfect. have no. I just have notes about your career. <laughs> yeah. So I went to quad. I went within Quad City. Injured my shoulder, so I went home. Whatever. They obviously just sent me pack, and they didn't. So that's care. what happened. You so, went there for two games and hurt your shoulder a bit. Went went there for, I think it was like, is it was it two games? It might have been four, four, maybe four. But anyways, I got smoked, and my shoulder just completely like. Uh, not sure what happened to it couldn't move it so i was just like okay i'm i'm going home like i need to get back to the fucking california sun here i can't be sitting in chicago anymore but the coach was like all right you can go like we'll talk next year whatever never got to talk to him so i ended up going to missouri which is another team in the coast um i lasted three days at training camp and then got traded to the alaska aces and i didn't even get traded for anyone they just traded me there and with that, I was just like, fuck, this is a, like, this so, is a shit show. What's, and what's wild is those East Coast contracts that dudes sign at when they're done college and junior, like, it, an East Coast contract means literally nothing. That means fuck all. Yeah. It means nothing, man. Nothing. Easy. <laughs> and, but the thing is, when you're signing it, 
You I'm think like, you're oh. doing it. You're going to be on the you team. You think you're signing for like 10 mil, like Austin Matthew or hundred mil. You're like, oh, this is unbelievable. I got somewhere to play hockey next yeah. year. <laughs> you're making like 150 a week living in some shithole apartment. And you're like, oh my God. <laughs> and somebody could show up one day and you just yeah. show up at the rink and they're like, well, you got to go. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. You're not doing well. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, got traded and went to Alaska and that was a, interesting time but yeah it was okay so you did so you went to a training camp there's probably a ton of guys and then the hl guys come down and whatever they trade you to alaska but alaska fun fact when right when i was getting to the coast they were a powerhouse yeah they uh that's what it was actually i lasted four or five days in training camp six or seven ahl guys got sent down and then a bunch of us guys got traded elsewhere but yeah went to alaska um they were a good team. Like we had a bunch of good players, um, but just kind of never really. Well, it said you only played 13 games that yeah, year. Yeah. I broke my ankle. Gee, you were blocking the... shots again. Yeah. I was on the PK blocking a shot and it rang off my toe mm. or my ankle, right? Where there's, you know, that spot between. Yeah. The and yeah. The and it smacked it. And I, I played the rest of the game because, you know, when you're, when you're going, it's like, oh, yeah. I can't really yeah. feel anything. Took my boot off and it just blew up like a balloon. And I was like, this isn't good. And the thing is in Alaska, they wouldn't even get me like an x-ray or anything. And I was like, well, what the fuck am I supposed to do? They wouldn't so, get you an x-ray? No, because it was, I don't know what it was, but it's like, they're folded now, you know? Right. They're folded. Yep. But, but yeah, it's uh that was kind of at the end of my coast career. And then that's when I fell into right. the UK scene. I, I got gotcha you then. But a couple of guys that were on Alaska Aces that year, Gleason Fournier. Sick player. Unbelievable player. I like to call him the swan because when he'd skate through the neutral zone, he was so calm. Uh, like his top half was like nothing was happening, but yeah. his bottom half would just be so smooth under the water. He's so good. He was one of the guys. Yeah. He dangled me when he played for Cardiff too. I don't understand that guy's career where, why he didn't get more of a chance, you know, know, man. It's all about being in the right place at the right time. You know what I mean? Well, Isn't it a cliche? People say that, but like, when you look at like, say you're a top six forward in a Maple Leaf organization right now, you think you're getting a sniff. You think if you sign with them, when you were a second, third, fourth rounder the last couple of years, you got a sniff. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> it's crazy, man. But if you go to the last place team or someone, or you're even on their AHL team, and then they suck, so they give everybody a yeah. chance at the end of the season, next thing you know, you got NHL games on your resume. <laughs> yeah, it could be a stud as well. Uh, you know, yeah, I know it's crazy, man, but that's just how it works, isn't it? It is. It sucks, but how it wor- it works. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, okay, so then uh, Fournier was good. Anyways, moving on then. You go, you're going back to the UK. So how do you end up with the Coventry Blaze and how do you decide to go back to the UK? Uh, well, after I broke my ankle in Alaska, I, again, I was like, I don't want to sit in Alaska just fucking doing nothing. I want to go back to California. The East Coast off. sucks though, doesn't yeah. it? Oh, it's terrible. The only good thing about Alaska was that you uh, you flew everywhere, so you got to earn air, uh, air miles, which was great. Really, and that was the only that was the only thing. Um, but yeah, came back to California, did rehab, trained pretty hard, and then I had no idea what I was really getting into with the UK scene. Um, but yeah, I think it was obviously Danny Stewart contacted me, but I knew uh, Venus Clements, and I think. And Shelby, no, Selby, Selby. Yeah, Selby. And uh, they said, do you want to come play in the UK? And I was like, you know what? I might as well give it a shot. It was like the most money, not like now, but like it was the most money I earned through like the coast career. And I was like, oh, that's and it was in pounds too. Back then it was like double. You're like, oh, this is unbelievable. Oh, what you're making the coast is, uh, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, you get taxed on as well. And you're like, well, oh, okay, whatever. And you're paying for your vehicles and yeah, like. It's a joke. But yeah, I went to, went to the uh, uh, 
EIHL, sorry. And, uh, you know, it was, it was pretty fun. And then I figured out that the fans were just fucking crazy. They're um, into it. They're passionate. Oh, they love it. Um, which was like when I was coming from, uh, like the coast, I was like, oh, these fans are sick, blah, blah, blah. Like some arenas you go to, they're like pretty cool. And then you got to the UK and it's just, they love, they love Twitter over there too, don't they? Yeah, um, I, I don't love it. But yeah, I don't they, I don't think they love it like they used to. I don't know really. I don't know. It's, it it's kind of been tamed down a little bit. Everyone just blocks each other now and no one <laughs> can chirp and like it was fun when I first went over because guys people would chirp me and I just kind of chirp them back and it was like fun. Right. And, and, I, like, and they would keep you entertained, right? Yeah. Now yeah. it's kind of everyone's scared to hurt everyone's feelings. But um because right, you could get right put right through the wood chipper if you say something wrong exactly. too, right? but- <laughs> every year under a microscope nowadays but but yeah my first year in Cobb was pretty fun I lived with Ross Venus and uh a guy named Garrett you might know him Garrett Klotz big d-man no he was a, huh no he was a forward when I played with him Klotz Klotz, when, Garrett Klotz, he was a tough guy. Yeah, I was gonna say he's fight fighter, but like, yeah, I, I, I didn't want to. Yeah, 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 bad boots though. Yeah, yeah, no, terrible boots. Like not the greatest player, but would fight anyone. Um, right. So I lived with those three, and that was absolute shambles. It was like <laughs> he's six foot. I think he's like six foot six, and just he eats like he just engulfs food. So like we'd have like the, our tiny little, you know what UK fridges are like. Yeah. And that like guy's that you. guy is just dominating your fridge. Oh, and like me and V are two guys that are 20 year, 22 years old, 21 years old. And we're just like, oh, okay, sorry. He's like 6'6, 250, and we're like six foot, 170 pounds. We're like, oh, okay, we'll just let this guy do what he wants. Wow. Yeah, uh, they are small time. fridges. They are small oh, fridges. My God. Fucking terrible. Yeah. Yeah, he uh we had a good time. We went out heaps. Like just pretty much every night we went out because it was a uni town. It was like Cobb is, it has a uni, so you know that's all we did. We went out during the uni nights. Um, well, if you're that young, like you, you might you, as well. Yeah, like it's that's hockey. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a good time. Um, <laughs> yeah, I agree. Uh, uh, were, were you guys any good then? What was Danny Stewart like? Danny was a good coach. I think you. I'm not sure. Probably wasn't his first year coaching, but he, he was a good. Good coach, knew what he was doing. Um, he's That's doing the well. year after I'm in that league. So I think that is his first year coaching. So you were I, the year before I came. Well, that's when I was running around naked doing pregame speeches. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Okay. I got injured like in November and then the doctor said I could never play again. So then my role changed. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You, you became the naked speech guy. Wow. I became the pregame speecher and I just took it from there. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's unreal. No, yeah, good, Danny, good Danny was a good guy. He, uh, bit of a punk on the good. ice to play against. What's that? I thought he was a bit of a punk when I played against him. Yeah, he was. He was like the, he was like a Brad Marchand back in his playing day, wasn't he? He just kind of oh. ran around. Well, I'd just be yelling and chirping. I'm like, what? What are you? What are you so upset about, man? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. He that's uh, it's kind of what he's like now. He's like a little. He's like a bulldog. Yeah, uh, that's how he coaches. Um, but yeah, he's doing well with those boys now. And uh, yeah, uh, we'll so th- yeah, so that was your uh, first time going there since you're two or three. Then so Coventry was just because you knew some of the boys that eh? Yeah, 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 definitely. And then that season, you make Team GB. You make the men's team, and yeah. you get, there's a bunch of shed guys on there. You got Colin Shields, Mosey. Jonathan Phillips, Myers, Bounds, Richie. They're all, they're all, they've all been to the shed. <laughs> yeah. And all those guys are still playing for GB except for Shields. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it was, wild. Yeah. Those guys are, I mean, they're unreal guys. It was a, it was a good group uh, that I got to play with that year as well. So it was, uh, it was cool to win a gold medal. Like I've never played international hockey, I guess you could say, um, other than under 20s, but men's is different. Um, but it was a blast. We got to play in Belfast, play in front of a home crowd. So um, it was a good team. I, my old man got to come and watch as well. He came in the locker room, had a few beers with everyone, um, which obviously the guys were pretty stoked about. Um, but yeah, it was a, it was a blast. I had a great time. Uh, yeah. Wow. Well, you get to do it in Belfast too, right? Like yeah. 
you win in some of those other countries that they were playing in the other years, like uh, winning in Belfast is a little bit different, I'd say. Yeah, it was a good night out after, for sure. What's your role on that team then when you're making Team GB for the first time? What were you? I was just, like my whole career, just kind of like a third line energy, get the puck deep, roll around and just kind of, if I score, I score. If not, just don't that, get scored on. Really? Because when you're yeah. in certain leagues, you score a lot. Uh, I mean, when I was in so Spoken, no, sorry, I'm no, because you say that Coventry had 20 points as a Brit, so I could see that being a third line guy. But that's a lot of points for a Brit on the third line. Then the next year, Guilford, 23 points, 35 games as a yeah. Brit. That's a lot. You got to remember, I'm a, I mean, I'm technically a Brit, but I'm actually an import in the EIHL. Oh, you are an import. I'm an import. Ah. Yeah. Which is, a, it's pretty questionable, but we'll let British hockey do what they want to do. Um, Mosey yeah, brought I'm, that up too. Mosey's an import of that league, but he's playing for make, Team GB all right those now. Guys, all those guys from Canada are imports in that league. You think you'd want amazing. to? You think you'd want to nurture your own and like? Yeah, like I like the thing is, I was actually born there, right? Like I was, <laughs> yeah, I was, I was fucking born in London. Uh, right. What else do I need to do to be a Brit? Yeah, I might have an American well, accent, but what well, you know what? There? My kid's not a German. He was born in Germany. He didn't get that shit either. That's fucking. That's wild. But you know what can you do? Yeah, my kid's got Canadian and American, but he was born in Germany, so. And then my wife's born in Wales, but she ain't Welsh. So yeah. isn't that weird? Hey, I'm British through and through, but people don't like when I say that. I can, I can hear it in the back of the palate there. Yeah. It comes back after I <laughs> the leave. Odd the odd time. The odd time I can yeah. hear oh, it. Yeah. yeah. All right. So then uh, you do your year with Coventry. You guys were probably a whatever. Okay. Like they seem to be, right? Yeah. Middle of the t- Well, I don't even think we made playoffs that year. Yeah. I can't. Remember. I can't remember. Well, then, so you end up going to Guilford next year. How does that happen? Uh, and what, were, so, what do you think of the UK league? Then it's your first year in the UK, even though you're an import. Like, what what do you think of the whole deal? I had a great time. I mean, yeah. I lived with there's what now I could say is like probably one of like my closest buddies in Ross Venus, um, and like Clemo. Um, but yeah, like. They showed me around, like, you know, we always went out to the pub, watch football. They love Liverpool, so we just watched Liverpool games the whole time. Um, but, yeah, so I was like, fuck, this is a great time. Of course I'm going to come back. Um, and then Guilford, they were in the league below, the league that I'm in now, which back then was the EPL. Um, so they made the jump up. And then I think Paul Dixon is his name, uh, the head coach there. He found a – I was in New Zealand at the time seeing family. Um, he messaged me and said, do you want to come to Guilford? And, you know, it was good money. It was a little more than I was on in Cobb. So I was like, okay, yeah, sure. I'll come try out Guilford. Guilford was a fun town. And then you had some good players on there as well. So, well, you were doing very well, sir. So did you get hurt that year? What happened? You only yeah. played 35 games. Concussion. Ugh. Head, or, head. Yeah. It was a hit to the hit to the head. Um, just kind of because you're really you're really like solidifying yourself as one of the top yeah because i was part, playing, part, i was gonna say partial brits <laughs> yeah know? i'm a partial brit, I, a get partial paid, brit. Like, I get paid like a brit but i am an import <laughs> what, basically what happened like, don't have to pay and, and you can you can play for the national team yeah but you're still in there with every other import from around yeah. the world you don't have to pay for a visa <laughs> for me to come over i'm already there you know i'm a, I'm a cheap import is what it is most um, I, I i i feel like um that's tough tough one <laughs> tough one tough bounce but yeah. you know the german yeah, was, the german passport bad. there's guys over there that could hardly walk still playing <laughs> yeah i know it's outrageous my buddy plays in that german league and he 
he's Canadian and he just ended up getting a German passport because he found it through his like great grandpa or something. Uh, it stops at the grandparents. I know. Uh, yeah. Oh, grandparents. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Grandparents. Yeah. And then once you got that, him. once you got that, you're running a muck. <laughs> yeah. And he's, I think he's making decent money over there too. Cause if you're a local player, it's fucking, it's great. Oh yeah. Yeah. They only yeah, have foreign it was, uh, ports. It's a whole different thing. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, I was playing with for uh, Brett Ferguson and Jeff Walker. I don't uh, think I know them. I'm too old. Sorry. No, they're. A, I think Walks is an older guy. He was a big boy. He just, he just basically ran the corners, found me open in the slot, and I sometimes buried, sometimes didn't. And then Fergie was just a hard worker. He came from Canada. Um, just, I think he's still playing there now. Um, and yeah, I was playing with those two, and then unfortunately, I got injured and. You know, that was the end of that. Oh, man. So then how long does it take? to? Because I, uh, I've i seen some guys with bad concussions in my career, and, like, it's tough as a teammate. Like, I had the ones that were, like, a week long maybe, not, yeah. like, the serious ones, Yeah, you know? And yeah. when you see some guys struggling with it where, like, they can't even come to the rank. You're like, you don't know how to help. You don't know what to do. Yeah, you can't do anything. No, it was, it was, it was probably one of, it was one of my worst ones. Uh, it was one of those ones where you like wake up in the morning with like just a pounding headache as soon as you looked at like your phone or something. And it was just one of those kind of like, when the hell is this stuff going to end? Yeah. Um, like riding the bike, I'd feel like puking. Uh, it was like one of those kind of sh- really bad ones, but I eventually got over it all and, you know, I'm all good now. So let's hope that doesn't happen again. Those- <laughs> yeah. That shit ain't fun at all for anybody. No. Um, so then it took a while then. So then what do I got here? Um, I don't know. Guilford. I don't know anything about, but um, so after that year, then you head back, you get better. So the, when do you start, when was it you started feeling better? Uh, it was, that's, this is when, this is why, so I started feeling better and then I went and skated with, uh, like pro guys. It's like a pro skate down here. And like, I took a knock and then symptoms started coming back. And And it's just a little knock. Yeah. I was like, it was like, we were going to the corner and it was kind of like, it was like a battle drill. So obviously guys down here, you're getting ready to go to the season. And I was, I think, I don't know if you know about, like I was signed with Sheffield at the time. I was going to play for them. After Um, Guilford, you were. After Guilford, Tomo was the coach. And yeah, basically just went into a guy, we hit each other. And I kept playing and then I stopped and I started just kind of like, going a bit funny and I was like okay this doesn't feel right so I got off and then yeah just kind of waited it out for another two three months and then went from there and then I think that's when I ended up in New Zealand and then I realized I could play again right which was good um okay now it makes sense so you were going to Sheffield so that yeah yeah I was going to Sheffield some of those fans hate me because of it some of them still love me but you know why would they hate you? Because you got a concussion. <laughs> well, I don't know. Because I signed, and then like, oh, you never showed up because you were in there. But you know what they're like. Like, they yeah, they don't know. It's so like fucking concussion. What do you want me to do? And that's what's weird to me, right? Because there's a lot of negativity out there in the hockey world. But when it comes to like what I'm doing in the shed and like what people write, like I've only seen one or two negative comments about people that have come on and like. I, there hasn't been much negativity. So thanks, everybody. Keep it up. Yeah. Don't, be do- <laughs> exactly. don't, don't be donkeys, or I don't want yeah, you to yeah, listen yeah. to my shit anyways. You <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. <laughs> um, anyways, okay. So that makes sense then. So then you start feeling better. You have to give up the Sheffield thing uh, yeah. because you can't be fit to play when you show up. So what are you going to do? Um, so then yeah. New Zealand, though, is the New Zealand League – because. I remember hearing about this because we were thinking about there's no other time we're ever going to go to Australia, but like their seasons are the opposite of the ones over here, aren't they? Yeah, so they're completely opposite. So summer here is winter there, and winter there is like summer here. So then so you took like that whole next season off, and then it went to New Zealand when they were in season. Yeah. 
It was uh, ah. it was like I was I st- I was feeling well. I was playing at home. I was training at home, so I was in pretty good shape. Um, and and then, so so you got back on the ice. You took a couple bumps on your own, and then yeah. you're starting to feel better. Yeah, and then I got a random I got a Facebook message request from a guy named Michael McRae, who's like I could say is like a good buddy of mine now because I lived with him when I was down there. Uh, he messaged me like, "Hey." I know you're from New Zealand. I know you have a passport. You'd be a local player here. I was like, oh, that sounds respectful. Like I'm a local player where I have a passport, unlike the UK. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Anyways, um, so I was like, you know, I accepted it. I mess- started messaging back and forth. And then two months later, I was on a plane down there and uh, met some absolute, like, unreal people down there. And it was a great time. Lived in a ski town. Um called queenstown uh so ski town yeah it's just like like skiing they got skiing in new zealand i yeah, didn't even the, know that. during the winter they do yeah oh in this place but yeah it was like small great time like good nights out uh and it was a pretty like you'd only practice twice a week and then play twice on the weekend um but yeah it was a good time that sounds like a great time what's yeah, the hockey was, like that so that, but you haven't played, and so I guess you're running a muck. I would say running a muck is a half import <laughs> Brit in the EIHL. You got 23 points in 35 games. Yeah. Uh, that's that's solid, man. That's on. That's well done. So, anyways, you don't play for like a year and a half, then, and you're dealing with all the other shit you got to deal with, and then you get to that league. Though, what's the level of hockey like in New Zealand? Ah, uh, so. The team I went to, the level was pretty good. Like, it was actually better than I thought it was going to be. Um, like, we have an ex-NHL draft pick on our team. His name's his name's Matt Schneider. He got drafted by the Flames. Um, and, yeah, he just ended up in New Zealand somehow, probably the same way I did. And uh, so, like, it, was, it wasn't like I was going down and I, was, and I was playing against guys that, like, had no idea how to skate. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. But um, no, it was uh, like I saw league. you got I saw like you know the research team got hot there. Your yeah. team, your team had about four or five different flags other than New Zealand. Yeah, because you had we had because you're allowed two imports in that league, so you bring over. We had a Canadian goalie, um, and we had a bunch of like what you would call dual nats, but they have New Zealand passports because they've been they playing there for so long now. Um, and they still run the, they have like the Canadian flag, American flag. Uh, what else did we have? I think there were a few other ones, but yeah, it was, uh, it was a good time for sure. Well, um, I guess the only time I played against New Zealand and Australia in roller hockey way back when, when I was like 15, 16, they were into roller hockey down there, weren't they? Yeah. Yeah. They were, I think, uh, I don't think they were too good at it, but they like to play. They like to play. I, yeah, I played against them. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, 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 you're right. You're right. Yeah. And then I took them to Base Fest, actually, um, which was just, uh, a high school party around, around here. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, okay. <laughs> I forgot about that. So, yeah, New Zealand, is there a lot of kangaroo there, too? No kangaroos in New Zealand. Only in Australia. Only in Australia. Really? Only in Australia, yeah. Oh, you just ruined all my questions. I was going to ask if you've ate kangaroo. No, I've never. No, I don't think I would if I had the chance. That's I agree. And these guys that played in the Australian league are eating them. No, no chance I would do that. Would you eat a deer? Oh, what do they call it? Uh, Venison? venison? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, There was a guy on our team. uh, He bought a bunch of it. And I don't know why, but I just had the thought of like a deer in my head. And I was like, like Bambi. I'm sure. sure, Yeah. I was like, I had Bambi in my head running around, jumping around. I was like, you know, I don't know. I don't know if I can do it. You got chicken and steak is good for me. And I was like, I guess, well, you got to drive around the roads in my neck of the woods a bit then. And you'll realize they, there's, the there's too many of them around. You, know, you, <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta take them you out you gotta do something with them because yeah. they're, they're, they're gonna hurt 
people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so what's in New Zealand then? If I thought they had kangaroos, what do I know? I guess, like, what's in New Zealand then? Kiwi, what's, kiwis. So it's uh, like a flight from New Zealand to Australia then, hey? New Zealand, Australia. Yeah. I'd say like what, six hours maybe. If you go to like closest point to point, I'd say my girlfriend really? would probably know, but I don't know like, nothing about over there. See, the thing is, I don't know. I don't know a lot about it. I you don't were, know. You were just there it. living, eh? I was just kind of there, like drinking, playing hockey, and yeah. having a good time. I understand. I was you like know? that in Germany. I was there for like three years, and I'd get off the bus, play a hockey game, and I still didn't know where anything was in Germany. Yeah, that basically <laughs> what I was what I was like. And still yeah. am like. Well, it's the it's it's and it's the the age you're at too. It's like we, when I was that age, that's exactly how I was. I had no idea where anything was in Germany, and then you 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 get older and you start appreciating appreciating yeah. shit more, you know. But well, for then, you're just looking for a good time. Well, you're always looking for a good time. Yeah, I'm that's always, true. That's, that's why. True. That's why we came out to the shed tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but when you went to that New Zealand league, though, you ran a muck. Like it doesn't matter what league you're in; it doesn't matter where you're playing. When you do what you did in that league, I had it in the notes here. Okay, you like you had the most goals, the most points, the best plus minus. You're the league MVP, the finals MVP, and your team won it. So when they, when they were trying to sign a local, they I guess they won. <laughs> Yeah, they, they, they hit. They, I guess you could say they hit the jackpot with the local with the local signing. Yeah, but, uh, that yeah, e- was, that email that guy wrote. He must be so proud of it. Yeah, like, oh, the yeah. guy that reached out to you, and then you guys win it all. Yeah, no, they. Uh, I mean, to be fair, that team they were like they didn't need me to win. They were fuck. They were uh, they were sick. They were stacked as it is. Um, if you look back on their stats, like the guy that sent me the message and then Matt Schneider, who was like the NHL draft pick, like they would just absolutely tear the league apart. Um, but yeah, it was, I had the, I had Schneider on my line and then one other local kid and we just kind of, you know, well, it ter- doesn't terrorize sound, other I, lines. I, it doesn't sound like the, the, the draft pick you keep talking about won the MVPs of everything, but, <laughs> anyway, no, there's gonna be one so many before they couldn't give them to him. But anymore. but that's what I'm They're saying is that it's not easy to do at any league. So well done, yeah, sir. But you. um, how many fans are going to a game in New Zealand? I say you only get about six, seven hundred, but it sounds like it sounds like a thousand, twelve hundred. And, and they're drinking and they're having and they're fun. Drinking, it's a big boozy culture down there in New Zealand. Um and they uh they were they were roller really hockey pl- the roller hockey players in high school were drinkers too yeah. yeah yeah so they they loved it they would get on the booze and then they just cheer us away and they'd have a mascot running around and shit and it was a, it was a pretty pretty good atmosphere to be fair so how big's that city then now like what's new zealand like i don't know anything about it how big's the- queenstown it's over what? just people <clears throat> Ten thousand. Like just Queenstown. Like, like, like yeah. Like come and go. It's a tourist town. Yeah, it's like a tourist. It's like a tourist ski town. So it's like, let's say twenty thousand, but it's like coming and going all the time. So it's busy on yeah. It's busy all the time, and guys are just going to ski slopes every day, and New so Zealand's what, a sick place. Sick what, place. What are you eating in New Zealand then? If you're not eating kangaroos, just the normal shit like everywhere else. <laughs> Lamb. They have, lamb. Called, they have this yeah place called Pedro's Lamb, which is unbelievable. It's like this big, so you get like you know those little star, not styrofoam, those little like tin foil kind of holder, like food holders. It's like you get this big rack of lamb, you get like potatoes, then you get a bunch of like gravy and shit like that, and that's what you'd eat. And oh my god, a rack of lamb, eh? Yeah, unreal. Like falling off, like just so soft. Just cook perfectly, and uh, see. I little, little I think bit. the only lamb I've ate's been in a kebab, like in the donair oh, form, right? That's, like that's shit. If you can, if you taste it, that's horse meat. Don't don't say that. That's fucking kangaroo meat. If anything, 
Stop it. <laughs> no, but I love I love you. that shit. Okay. Oh, I do too. When I'm okay. coming home at 4 a.m. in England, I'm definitely getting a kebab. Yeah, you are. And you're gonna to feel go. great, so don't ever say that to yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> but no, me, I've never had the real lamb. lamb. I'd be like, nah, sorry, I'm gonna get some Pedro's, and that's it. You'll so, never. Uh, so that's where. So if I was gonna ask you about, like, you've traveled a lot of the world, where the best food you think is? Are you saying lamb in New Zealand or what? Oh. Uh. You're saying say, the lamb, it's not the shank. You're saying a rack. You're saying the ribs, not the shank. Or I don't know. know. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not like a guy's guy. I don't know anything about that. But this me just, neither. The I lamb just like. So I'm not a guy's guy either. I just like cooking. whether it's a fucking <laughs> trap or a fucking rib or a toe or whatever. 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 It, it was is, good it, though. But yeah. you're eating it with gravy, not tzatziki, because you know, like I'm. No, with- you're not getting anything else on there. Just a little, like, it's almost like the grease off the lamb is just like sitting there with it, and you yeah, just, just like the beef roast, like yeah, okay. I'd say the food in New Zealand is probably the best though, because it's all fresh and it's just. Really, what does she say? What? Tell her to come over here and tell us what she thinks. Where's the best food in the world? Best food in the world. She's gonna say New Zealand. Um, or Indonesia. No, honestly, I think it's like Europe. Well, like I, I'm not going to argue Europe with that. From- I think in Europe, you got like, so when I'm in Germany, you got the Italians, you got the Germans, you got the Turkish fellas, you got everything you need. Everybody's together cooking you what you want. Yeah. Food in New Zealand That's is good. True. The meat in New Zealand is like really good. Probably better than. You're saying the lambs or what else? Yeah, they, they even got... like the chicken, the beef. And it's just, I don't know. It's just better. <laughs> mm-hmm. Really? Yes. The lamb. I got to try lamb soon, but I feel like if I go to the grocery store and buy lamb, it's not going to taste like what we're talking New about. Lamb. Yeah. If you can get New Zealand lamb over there. I don't think we can get New Zealand lamb here in Concord. <laughs> well, if you're ever over there, you never just, know. Just thinking out loud <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> but okay well hopefully someday i'll make it over there yeah right? definitely all right so you play there one year ran amok dominated everybody i think we can move on from that though you uh then signed for milton Keynes. yeah ran amok again 37 and, uh... goals and 35 games so you're going back to the eihl after the new zealand experience you did what you did there, but you weren't getting any respect from the EIHL to get like a different deal or what? No, because I went, no, I was uh, not really. I mean, it was just kind of Milton Keynes was, I got a message from a, a guy named Russell Cowley. I'm sure you know of him. Mm-hmm. You know, Russ Cowley? Coventry Blaze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's kind of like a UK hockey legend, I guess you could say. Um, respected legend. Um, he could, me saying, I may sound stupid when I say this, but was he number 17 and shot left? Yeah, 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 yeah. There you go. Sexy people Holy moly, the sexy people ready. Who's that now? That was my brother. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was, um, where are you guys going tonight? You're trying to, he's saying that because you're going somewhere tonight, eh? And I, he wants to, no, he wants to, it's not till 7 30. He wants, he's going, I'm not sure where we're going, but he wants to go to dinner again. But no, he messaged me saying, uh, do you want to come play for Milton Keynes? And I was like, I was kind of loving life down in New Zealand because it was so fucking relaxed. But uh, I said, sure. And I think Milton Keynes is obviously the league below at this point. Um, and yeah, I went there and I wasn't, I didn't know what to expect. I was just kind of going back to British hockey and um, unreal teammates, like I'm still playing with them now, played with them last year, obviously. But uh, yeah, just, I don't know. I think I went 15, I think I went 15 goals, zero assists for <laughs> when I first got there. And these guys, these guys were looking at me like, do you pass the puck or not? <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm just kind of shooting the puck and then it goes in. But yeah, it was, uh, I That's got there. And weird like, way to start, eh? <laughs> yeah, I know. 15 and zero assists. I was like, oh, I just look like a selfish guy. But um, yeah, I, that's, when, that's yeah. when COVID hit. And we, uh, 
didn't get to finish the season. Oh, really? So that's when COVID hits and you don't finish the season and you're yeah. running a muck 37 yeah. goals and 35 games played. Yeah. And that, that all that baloney, then that changes everything. Eh? So then that season just ends and it's just whatever. So then yeah. where do you head from there? You're not going back to LA? No, we were staying, we were staying at, cause we just, everyone thought it was going to be like oh, a three week thing. Right. So we we're like, oh, okay, whatever. We'll just stick it out and then we'll be able to finish the season in three weeks. Um, and then here we are two years later. Um, but we, yeah, we stayed at my dad's house cause he had a, he just said, come live with us for a little bit. Um, like we said, we didn't know it was going to be fucking two years. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, a lot of booze in lockdown. I'm sure, as you know, I think I think a lot of people did that. Yeah, a lot of booze, a lot of trying to work out, a lot of oh, okay, I'm gonna start on Monday, and then you just end up having a having a beer. But um, but yeah, it was uh, it was interesting. Uh, it, was, it was it was a hard time for a lot of people, right? And everybody dealt with it differently, you yeah. know. Whatever. No, I'm sure it was a tough time for a lot of people, but it was uh, it sucked not being able to play, and then. We never got to finish that season, which I think we would have won because we had a pretty good team. So pretty now, team. now it all makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I was trying to figure out why you went back and forth, but it's because you haven't played that much. So then that season ends and you go to New Zealand because they have a season? Because they had a season and COVID wasn't really like hitting them yet. So right. they, didn't, they weren't locked down. Everything was open. So I was like, oh, let's go back. Obviously, and you were allowed to just go there because you got a passport. Right? Yeah, and my girlfriend's from there, so she can just go there as well. And uh, went back for a couple months. No restrictions, no nothing. And then uh, we went back to England, back to Milton Keynes. And we were kind of like on edge, like, oh, am I? are we going to be able to finish the season or is it going to lock down again? And then now it's just kind of everything's open. And right. Yeah. Like never existed. Right. Like everything. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. It's easy, but you know, that's how it works, I guess. Yeah. Weird stuff. Um, yeah. Um, well you guys got dinner and stuff, but like, I guess, you know, the shed loves love stories. So she's from New Zealand. Where'd you meet her? Uh, we, she was a, babysitter in new zealand and one of the guys on the team had like a i guess we had like a dinner party it was like a kind of team dinner party and obviously loads of wine was consumed and we just c- kind of started chatting that and can happen didn't, didn't really think of anything of it and then uh through the next couple like weeks just started hanging out obviously down there wine's a pretty big thing so really eh? oh yeah she got me into wine i wasn't into it before and then she's like i'll try this and i was just like, i wasn't into wine until i went to germany and they took me to a yeah. vineyard and showed oh. me how how it was all made and i was trying it and i had one of the best nights of my life and then yeah, yeah you're pretty oh. well hooked <laughs> yeah exactly and now you go through now you go through a bottle like it's nothing um, right and then eventually you're like okay gotta stop with the wine that's yeah you know that's where i'm at <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i uh i'm laying low on the wines for now but <laughs> what she's laughing at no me. but she's in germany off. in germany the team told me they're like beer makes you too fat if you're gonna drink yeah, so drink wine drink. but then exactly. i so I, I stuck with that i'm like well you told me to do it but then yeah. it does make you drunker <laughs> yeah oh, it does it's easier to get drunk on it because if you've grown up drinking at a certain pace with a beer you switch that to wine Shit can get carried yeah. away. Oh yeah, that's when I say bottle goes quick. You're because you drink it at, at like a beer's pace, and you're like, yeah, oh. that shit will oh, hit you. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. Haven't had one. Yeah, okay. Anyways, <laughs> I don't think I have anything else. Where are you going for dinner tonight? You get going for lamb? Not no, no, not here. We don't go for lamb. No, here. Not here. Only, only, only in only in New Zealand. Exactly. Not- I'm not sure where we're going, but my brother picked it. So who knows where that'll be, but, um, well, yeah. it sounds fun, dude. Have fun. Um, no, that'll I, be good time. I'm going to download this. I'm going to send it. I'm going to walk yeah. the dog and go to bed. What kind of dog you got? A uh, lab. He's an idiot. Aren't they all? Well, Aren't all labs idiots. Well, 
the guy's got a fantastic life. Okay. I got an electric fence for him. He has, a, he has, he has a great yard that if he just doesn't go past the electric fence, he's fine. But there's this Husky that's been running down the road and the boy, the boy can't control himself. So also, he's a female Husky running down and she's like, oh, and, yeah. and he just can't, he can't handle it. So he's running through the fence and then he's getting zapped, but he, I think the love is too much for him. So he just, um, he just eats it. I, he's like, nah, I'm, I'm getting sick. phone calls from people saying like, your dog's gone again. And I'm like, well, he's ruining his life over he's in love. He, well, he's ruining his life over the, uh, you know, and like, we already neutered him, so I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> like, hey, you know, it's just been a while. He's excited. <laughs> he's excited. Definitely. Yeah. Well, it's been great getting to know you, dude. Yeah, you too, man. Definitely. And this has been another episode of Two Ales and Hockey Tales with Stewie and Wally.